is there such a thing as scoring too many goals in the playoffs? Don't worry, we'll explain. Plus, Alex McLeddy, the king of Twitter, joins us for hockey talk and fun. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Jim Beam, Better Edge, Royal Credit Union, and Peak Vestibular Center. This is season three, episode 128. Marcus Foligno Fan Club Assemble! Not only is SodaStick.com the only place to get your official Marcus Foligno Fan Club tee, but it's also the only place to get all your favorite wild team garb, plus so much more beyond hockey. Use code BARDOWNBEAUTIES for 15% off your total purchase at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting Let's Play Hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the State of Hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company in corporate Claremont, Kentucky. From New Voice Studios. Oh yeah, you betcha. Let's go to the boat. Discombobulate on the spot. Part of the Talk North Podcast Network. <laughs> Fly out to Russia personally. <laughs> Jesse Pierce. This is off the rails. We're only <laughs> Already. a couple minutes in. Alexis Pearson. We're not going to throw batteries on on the ice at, you know, Kuro Kaprizov. This is, we're not that crazy. <laughs> like Bar Down Beauty's Podcast. <laughs> Was it about guys getting hammered down low night after night? Uh, it's like <laughs> everyone loves to crap on analytics, but the analytics do not lie here. We are firing Fred at the top of the hour. More hit. It's like tea. <laughs> tea. Starts now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Bar Down Beauties podcast. I am Alexis Pearson. This is producer Fred. Jesse Pierce is fired in her place. We have Alex Micheletti, the king of Twitter. And you're probably thinking Micheletti, Micheletti. Where do I know that name from? Pat Micheletti is his dad. Joe Micheletti is his uncle. And Alex, I got to ask you because when people ask me, how'd you get into hockey? I'm like, oh, I just like the sport. It's cool. I like watching it. You have a way better answer um, than I do. How did you get into loving hockey? You grew up around it, obviously. Tell our listeners um, how you got involved in this sport. Yeah, um, I, my dad and, and my uncle Joe, you know, both played hockey at a really high level and uh, have always been at, at the rink with my dad. And uh, I, oh, that's one of our favorite things to do is, uh, you know, be, uh, you know, when he's announcing to have me there and uh, when he's on the radio too uh, at Cape Ann, I always I always go in with him too. And so, yeah, I just, I, I love, love the sport, every, every level, uh, men's and women's. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Can well, you rank the Michelettis? Oh, I want to hear, yeah. what is your Michelletti <laughs> ranking? It's like when the Kardashians like, get there's asked like 18 of them. I want to know who is the best Michelletti all yeah. the way down. <laughs> yeah, you, you asked my, you asked my dad, uh, you know, we are, we're always, we always have the opposite takes. So like, I'll, uh, I'll say my uncle Joe's number one, just, uh, just to give it to him. Yeah. Yeah. And then my dad number, num- number two. See, if someone would have asked me that question, I would have put myself at the top of the list. That's how I know right. you're way more humble than like, me. Yeah. Alex. You're on the list, <laughs> man. You should be yeah. On yeah. Too. Okay. Yeah. I'm on the list too. I'll, 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 I'll put myself second in my dad. Could just, uh, <laughs> make it even more spicy <laughs> that's fair um you know something we do have in common as far as the, the love of hockey is you and I both love watching the sport with our dads I know you've posted before yeah. you know whether it's going to the games with him or sitting down and watching a playoff game um that's something that even that I now that I don't live at home anymore you can find me on most of my free nights watching hockey with my dad at my parents house um how cool is it you know I know how cool it is I know you will know how cool it is but tell our listeners you know just being able to bond over a sport like that with your parent um is is a pretty cool feeling isn't it yeah especially you know as you know too as we get older too and our parents get older it's uh you know i think it's really important to spend spend time with them and so yeah to bond over uh an amazing sport like hockey there's nothing better and uh you know watching a game with him is is very entertaining as as you know and <laughs> so yeah i absolutely love it do you ever like just look at your dad and go, you know what, dad, not tonight, <laughs> not, I don't want to, I, talk I about do that with tonight. my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's what te- uh, texting is for too. Right. And so or in, in phone calls and FaceTime. So yeah, it's, uh, it, it, nothing better though, for sure. Just, uh, you know, especially when, you know, something ha- funny happens during the game, it's, it's always, you know, fun to discuss about too. So. 
So who is the greater hockey mind between you and your dad? Because this is something that my dad and I argue about religiously. And I will die on the fact that I am smarter than my dad when it comes to hockey. He'll argue he has twice as much experience as me and we'll go back and forth for the rest of the night. Do you and your dad argue about this? Do one of you believe that you are the smarter hockey mind over the other? Oh yeah, all the time. I'm <laughs> sure the same same type of arguments that you get in with your dad, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun though, going back and forth and- yeah, I absolutely love uh, trying to give it to him, especially when I have a take that turns out to be correct. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have as many of those. That's where you got me there. Most of my takes right. turn out to be wrong. So, uh, <laughs> well, speaking of hockey takes, let's get into um, the this postseason here. And something I wanted to talk about today because it's driving me a little bonkers is the fact that so many of the games in the postseason here, starting with the first round all the way to where we are now at the conference finals, there has been so many high scoring games in this postseason. And this to me, it's got to be, you know, record breaking. I don't know the exact stats. I don't know the history of it as far as the years and, and where the amount of goals rank in the postseason. But this for sure is up there as far as one of the higher scoring postseasons. It's not too often in the playoffs. You see four, five, six goals being scored a night in the playoffs per game. And we are seeing that this postseason. Um, Alex, do you like the high scoring postseason? Because personally, I'm not a fan of it. And that might be a hot take. I love high scoring in the regular season. I love watching the wild score a lot of goals, but in the postseason, I want the goals to matter a little bit more. And sometimes it feels this postseason that it's like, oh, they scored two. Well, the other team's going to go score three in a minute anyway. So what does it matter? What are your thoughts on a high scoring postseason here? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of fun to see some of the scoring, but you know, I'm with you too. I love, I love goal, the goaltenders that are, you know, you know, like Vasilevsky and Chesterkin that are, that are in, uh, you know, these, these final four uh, teams, but, you know, you take a look at the teams that are in, you know, left. I mean, they're all, they can all score five, six a night and the amount of offensive talent out there, you know, you got McDavid, Dreisaitl, McKinnon, Kucherov, uh, Chris Kreider, Panarin. I mean, these, you know, Kale McCarr, Adam Fox. I mean, there's, there's so much offensive talent out there. It's, it's tough to stop. And, I think the goalies are getting a lot more banged up. Uh, you, you know, you take a look at Carolina, they, uh, they had so many goaltending injuries and, uh, you know, uh, it, it's tough. Uh, you know, these, these playoffs are a grind and, uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of goalie collisions. Uh, you know, we yeah. saw Jordan Bennington get, get run into. And so it, it's really affecting, uh, teams for sure. Well, and speaking of goalies, what are your thoughts? what's your thought on strong goaltending in the playoffs? We've talked about on the podcast time and time again, this postseason and leading up to the postseason, how much it can matter, how, how, um, you know, far a good goaltender can take a maybe average playoff team, but it seems like in this postseason, it almost doesn't matter as much. And even you look at the first game with the Rangers and the bolts, I don't think anyone expected that game to go. No. We, we all thought that was going to be a one, nothing over, you know, three double overtime, you know, victory for a team. And we've got goals left and right. Um, you know, you look at Mike Smith with, Edmonton and uh, we talked about Martin Jones with the Sharks on the in the playoffs a few years back on the podcast last week does it matter this postseason when as many goals are being scored as they are no I don't think so at all um and you know it's like it seems like it's the first one to five or six is gonna win or maybe maybe even more and uh you know I think the officiating too uh has you know, it's been all over the place um and so I think a lot more calls are, are being made by the refs. And so it's leading to a lot more, you know, power play opportunities too, that, which makes, you know, scoring go way up as well. And so, yeah, it's, it's been absolutely crazy. Uh, hopefully I'm with you. Hopefully in the Stanley cup final things uh, slow down <laughs> a little bit and maybe we see some overtime games, which would be really fun for the, for the final for sure. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about goaltending. You talked, you named some of the big scores that are left in the conference finals yep. here. The big, you know, storyline going into the conference finals was the goalie thing in the Eastern Conference and the superstars of Nathan McKinnon and Connor McDavid in the Western Conference. We've seen a couple games now of, of, of the conference finals, and we're going to see a couple more over this weekend before this episode comes out. But heading into the conference finals, what were you more excited about? The Shesterkin versus Vasilevsky or McKinnon versus McDavid? Which one excited you more? Yeah, I, I, I could not wait for McDavid uh, McKinnon. I mean, these 
these guys have wanted a Stanley Cup. They've been in the league for for quite a bit now, and so to see that matchup uh, and just the the speed, uh, it's just incredible to to watch. And uh, you know, you got guys on you know not not only those two, but I mean, you got Drysaitel, who I think has been the best player in the playoffs, and uh, Nazem Kadri has been amazing. Evander and Kane, Ratman, and <laughs> Evander Kane, like. When they put those three together, I mean, it it changed the series for for Edmonton, and I think that's the only reason why they're they're still in it is because they 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 made a super line. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's crazy, and you know, Evander Kane, he's yeah, he needs the money, and so he he wants to cash <laughs> in. So um, yeah, it's been it's been fun to watch for sure. Uh, I'm going to ask you one more general playoff question. Then I want to ask you a wild question here. So um, Jesse and I have talked about the fact of the bolts. I think, you know, they've made it this far in the playoffs again. Can they three peat? You know, what are their chances of it now that they've made it this far? Um, I, my opinion on it was if they were going to get knocked out of the playoffs, it had to happen in the first round. You let a team like yep. that hang around there. Now they're going to smell it again. They're going to smell another championship and now they're this close. Do you think they have the ability to three Pete, or do you think they're either going to get knocked out here in the conference finals or one of the Western teams, whoever does end up advancing in that series, uh, will be able to take them down. Yeah, I think they're good. I, I, I want to see a three Pete. I think they can do it. Um, you know, they, if you if you remember from the Toronto series, they had a really tough first game yeah. against Toronto too, and then then came back. And um, you know, this is a team that's won multiple in a row. I mean, and they I think you know it's so crazy that John Cooper hasn't won a Coach of the Year uh, award yet. Um, a Jack Adams. Uh, all, all they do is win. Um, and uh, you know they they have guys at every position uh, that are you know top top end and. Uh, when you get a guy like Nikita Kucherov, when he really is going, uh, he's, he seems unstoppable. Um, and their back end is incredible with, mm -hmm. with, with Victor Hedman and Ryan McDonough and, you know, and they have the best goalie, I think in you know, Andre Vasilevsky. And so I'm not counting them out. Um, <laughs> you know, there, you know, the, there's a reason why these games, you know, or these series tend to go six or seven games yeah. and I'll, I'll take Tampa Bay. No, 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 no doubt. I think I'm on that train now too. At first I was like, I don't want to see them win a third one. I want, I want to mix yeah. it up. Give me somebody new. And now I'm kind of like, no, I want them to go do it because now they've made it this far. And you know, it's so rare in sports to see teams win consecutively like that. And so it'd be kind of cool. I think to, to see them do it again. So I'm going to ask you a wild question now, before we take a quick break and get into the next segment here. Um, something I love about you, Alex, is you are very, you know, you, you, you walk the line on Twitter. You're not too biased one way or the other. you you yep. put your thoughts out there and they are what they are. And I love that about you. Um, and so the question I want to ask, I know you're going to give me an honest answer. Last week, Jesse and I talked about the fact that now that we've seen the playoffs go on and we're here in the conference finals, it really feels like maybe that wild team we were so sure had it all, maybe didn't have it all this year. What are your thoughts now that you've seen the teams advance and we've got four teams remaining? Does it seem to you like the wild should be here or were they not ready for this yet? They still aren't ready. Um, you know, I think they're building towards it, but uh, I mean, the, the postseason is such a different animal. We, 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 we saw, you know, you know, some of the, the, the high skilled guys really struggle um, you know, I think some of them were, you know, of course, dealing with some some big injuries. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, for Kevin Fiala to not get a single goal in the playoffs or in the, you know, in the first round, that that was tough. I mean, you're relying on those guys, your, you know, your game breakers uh, to, to score. And, you know, Krill needed help. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he couldn't he couldn't do it all himself. He tried. He tried his <laughs> hardest. But, uh, you know, the. When it when it comes to the postseason, it seems like the mental side of things is even more important than the skill. Um, you know, you know, Kevin had 16 penalty minutes. You know, yeah. they just the blues got in his head, and uh, you know, it they're they're building towards it. I think they they have it, but uh, like like we've all talked about too, uh, they're still missing that number one center. Um, mm -hmm. you, you saw how easy it was for Ryan O'Reilly against uh, against the Wild. I mean he was winning every face off and scoring on the power play. And so they're, they're still missing that center. I, I, I trust Billy Guerin. No, no doubt. I mean, he's made every, every uh, correct move, I think so far, um, you know, the buyouts, you know, you know, people say it's going to hurt the team, but they needed to make a, a culture change and 
uh, you know, he did a great job with the, you know, the acquisitions that he made, you know, mm-hmm. the, the guys that he picked up, you know, were, were playoff uh, type guys. Um, you know, the, the team just didn't execute. And, uh, but I think they're going to get there. I mean, you, you saw, you saw, they had an amazing regular season mm-hmm. and uh, you know, things are starting to change with this organization, new leadership and uh, your guy, Marcus Salino, mm-hmm. I think it, it's, it's awesome to see him in a leadership role now yeah. too. And uh, uh, you know, I, if they keep the goaltending tandem together um, I, I, I really like uh, Talbot and Flurry working together. They seem to get along and uh, yeah, we'll see. It's going to be, very interesting off season, uh, you know, see if, if Kevin does get traded, what they can get back for him. You know, if they want to go with prospects or try to get some NHL level guys, that'll be interesting. And, uh, you'll see what they do with Matt Dumba too. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, that's a, that's a big contract and yeah, we'll see. It's going to be very fun, uh, fun to watch. I gotta Uh, ask, did you ever trust Kevin Fiala? I never trusted him to actually be (laughs) the guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I'm right there with you, Fred. You know, like, like, like I mentioned, the postseason is so different, and you know, some guys can handle the pressure, and some, some can't. And you know, that you see the teams that are left in the playoffs right now. That you know, they all have, they all have guys that uh, know know how to win and get get to you know get to winning Stanley Cups. And uh, you know, a, a team like the the Flames is similar to the Wild. Uh, you know, they. They have a lot of high skilled guys, um, but, you know, when it comes to the, you know, to the, you know, you know, end of the playoffs here and trying to advance further and further, you know, some guys can't handle it and and some, you know, some can't. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting to see. I, I'm right there with you. There's, you know, some guys on, on, on this wild team that's like, oh, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, you know, come playoffs, they, you know, they turn into ghosts. Um yeah, it's, it's tough. So, uh, real quick, you, your answer from a moment ago, uh, yep. came up with another question for me here. You said the wild are taking steps in the right direction. Yep. Does that mean that next year will be another step forward? Or do you think that's going to be one of those one step back before we can take a few forward kind of things? We all know this roster is not going to look like what it looks like come the beginning of next season for whatever that means, right? That could mean some really big changes. That could mean some minor tweaks. Money's going to have to get moved around. We can't pay everyone who needs a new contract. Um, do you think that whatever happens is going to put them one step forward? Or do you think we're going to see a little bit of a regression next year? Um, yeah, it could be a little regression depending on, uh, you know, what they get back for Kevin Fiala. I mean, cause that's, <laughs> that's tough to, to replace the amount of points that, you know, 85 plus points that, um, he had, uh, this season and, yeah. you know, you're really, you're really hoping that some of the young guys can, can take a step and, and maybe make the team, uh, you know, Marco Rossi, uh, you know, uh, you know, nothing's going to be earned for him. You know, he's going to, uh, you know, he's not just going to be handed a, a, a roster spot. He's really going to have to, to earn it. Um, maybe a guy like Adam Beckman and, you know, we're hoping to finally see Kalen Addison, you know, who yeah. knows. Um, uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, with the, with the buyouts kicking in now, um, you know, they're going to need some, you know, cheaper contracts, uh, and, and guy, some of those guys to step up and, uh, we'll see, you know, uh, you know, with Billy G, nothing surprises us, you know, uh, some of, some of the established guys on this team, you know, he could, uh, decide to move, you know, maybe, a uh, you know, um, you know, Zuccarello or, sure. um, you know, or Matt Dumba, you know, which, mm-hmm. you know, he's so beloved here with, with everybody, but, uh, like you said, we, they can't pay everybody. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of promising talent coming yeah. up and, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, what Jesper Wallstad does, uh, you know, to, to draft the goalie in the first round is, uh, that, that takes a lot of guts. Um, you don't see it too often and, uh, you know, it'll be really fun to, to finally see, um, you know, you know, a drafted goalies st- hopefully stay with the organization for a long time. Yeah. You know, it, it just didn't work out with Darcy Kemper, but sure. I'm hoping it hoping it does with uh, with Wallstead going forward. Over, over under five entry level contracts playing <laughs> on the ice opening night. Yeah, I, it's going to be close. Five. That's the so question. Yeah. the over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, match it could. You know, it, uh, and they're going to have to they're going to have to score. I mean, mm-hmm. otherwise this team will 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 struggle. I mean, yeah, I mean. 
to re- like I said, to replace Kevin's points, it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of work. And you know, whatever team they trade with, hopefully they can get um, you know a couple guys that are NHL ready, and uh, you know maybe uh, you know, combine some some te- uh, cheaper contracts, like like you mentioned, uh, maybe some entry entry level deals, some some guys that are 21, 22, but they're you know they're finally ready to to play in the NHL. So yeah, it'll be interesting. And yeah, can I ask a question about Matt Dumba really fast? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is it going to be really hard to replace Matt Dumba on the ice? Because he, uh, I feel like he has never, ever, ever been the same since the Kachuk fight. Yeah. He hasn't uh, been right. that elite Matt Dumba. So I'm like, is it that hard to replace? I mean, obviously the locker room presence is a huge deal, but is it going to be that hard to replace him? Yeah. I mean, you, you take a look, they have Kalen Addison right there. Who's the same, you know, same size. And I think, I, I think the reason why Addison hasn't really gotten a chance is, you know, they don't want so many small defensemen out mm-hmm. there. I mean, him, uh, you know, uh, Spurgeon, Spurgeon, they're all, they're all pretty much the the same size. And so I think if you get, you give Kalen Addison a, a, a chance, he can, he, he can put up the same production probably even more than, than Matt. And yeah, it's, it's tough because, you know, I, I don't think, you know, you know, Matt still tries to play the same type of style that he's always played with. And, um, you know, that's starting to, to cause more and more injuries. He saw, um, you know, he tried to take on a six, six guy, uh, in, in Nashville and, you know, it, it, he got a punctured lung from it. Uh, you know, it's, and ended up in the hospital. I mean, I, that, you know, that, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, you know, and, you know, he's so loved here on and mm-hmm. off the ice and, uh, um, you know, he just bought a home here. So it, it would be tough, tough to see him go. Um, but, you know, they have the guys to, to, you know, replacement, uh, replace them. And, you know, they got another kid that's waiting in the wings in, in Lambos, who was a first round draft pick. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, I, they have the, they have the talent in, in Iowa and elsewhere to, to replace them. And, they could probably get, uh, you know, a, a decent return, uh, you know, because you look at, there's so many desperate teams out there for, yeah. for decent, decent defensemen. You, you look like, you look at our old friend in uh, Chuck Fletcher in Philadelphia and in teams like that, that in, in LA that could, you know, definitely use um, some defensemen. Heck maybe, you know, the rumor is with, with Kevin to go to, to New, New Jersey, maybe they mm-hmm. can package Kevin and, and Matt that together and uh, get get a lot of uh, good prospects back uh, we'll see you'd be putting a lot of faith in Chuck Fletcher to make a smart enough trade to get Matt Dumb <laughs> on his team so I think that that one might be a bit of a stretch the rest of them I could see um, well we've no. got we've got all off season to talk about the Minnesota Wild uh, we're going to take a quick break uh, but before we do in the off season we'll worry about that later for now uh, we're worried about the playoffs and if you want to make a bet on who you think is going to win the Stanley Cup we've got just the place for you our friends at betteredge.com that's b-e-t-t-o-r edge.com code buttes b-e-a U-T-S. We'll get you $10 at sign up. Go make a bet. Make your pick for who's going to win the Stanley Cup. You think you know so much? Go make a bet. Put your money where your mouth is. Uh, they're good guys over there and a lot of other stuff you can bet on as well. So go check them out. Uh, we're going to take a quick break when we come back up for debate. Okay. I want you to think of the first time you took a big hit on the ice. Maybe it was a men's adult league. Maybe you were slammed into the boards in a big game, or maybe you pulled a Jesse and just tripped over the blue line. Either way, it's happened. Boys hockey, girls hockey, it doesn't matter. We've all been there with our first big hits. And unfortunately, those hits can add up over time. Hockey players can end up with dizziness, headaches, and pain, and a large portion have even experienced concussion-like symptoms as a result. Thankfully, there's an answer. Dr. Tyler Stewart with Peak Vestibular Center specializes in the drug-free treatment of nagging concussion symptoms. Dr. Stewart formulated the 3A Brain Restoration Program, a comprehensive program to get to the root cause of your symptoms. He utilizes the latest technology and techniques to get you back on the path to your best life and back on the ice. If you're dealing with dizziness, headaches, or pain after taking one too many hits, contact Dr. Stewart for a complimentary consultation today. Go to dizzinesscare.com or call 715-690-2211 to schedule your complimentary consultation. 
Welcome back. Segment three, uh, I guess segment two now, uh, since we're doing things a little differently. So segment two, up for debate. That's got a nice ring to it. Alex, you listen to the podcast. You know the drill. Every week we put out on our Twitter a question for our followers where we want them to debate it. And then we talk about it on the podcast. Today, you get to join in on the fun. Our debate this week, talking about the Minnesota Wild. In the offseason last year and at the trade deadline and whatnot, the blue line saw a lot of turnover. So our question this week was, if you could only keep one defenseman who joined the team within this past year, who would you like to bring back? The options were Kulikov, Merrill, Middleton. Make your pick and give us a reason why, Alex. Yeah, it's got to be Jacob Middleton. Uh, You know, Kulikov was a nightmare. And uh, Merrill, uh, (laughs) I mean, John Merrill's John Merrill. He's a depth defenseman. He's not really going to change uh, much, but I, I was so impressed with Jacob Middleton. Um, you know, he came from a San Jose team that was really struggling, but he was playing on their top, top pairing with Eric Carlson. And he came here and, and was the perfect fit with, uh, um, Jared Spurgeon. I think it allowed Jared to, to be more offensive and, uh, you know, Middleton could be the, the stay at home guy and also, you know, protect guys out there if need be. And, uh, he seemed to fit in really well with, with everybody. And, um, you know, I think he's the, the perfect, uh, playoff defenseman too. Um, you know, he's, he's what this wild team was always looking for was a, a bigger rugged defenseman. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I really liked his play and, you know, he's still what 26, 27. Yeah. So he's right in the, in the prime of his career. And, uh, yeah, he was a guy that had to work extremely hard to make it to the, to the NHL. And, uh, I really liked his, his personality. He's, uh, he's a really, really funny interview and uh, um, yeah, a perfect locker room guy too. And so he would be my pick to hopefully bring, bring back fingers crossed. That's my pick as well. It's hard to argue otherwise. Right. I mean, once you saw right. what he did when he joined the wild, it's like, man, I mean, and I think, you know, Kulkov had his moments where he was good. Yeah. He scored some big goals. He was fun to watch. Uh, Merrill, yeah. like you said, he is, you get what you pay for with Merrill. You know, he's yeah. not going to go change your life, but he will make, he'll do what he needs to do. Um, mm-hmm. Jamie Ben was in and out of the lineup. And when he was in it, yeah. he wasn't anything spectacular, uh, but Middleton really came in and he just kind of, you know, he took the wild fans by storm. I think everyone loved him so easily. Easily and so quickly. I mean, and yeah. I'll talk about his skill set in a moment, but I mean, when he joined the team, we interviewed him on the Wild Radio Network post game many a time. And I loved listening to him. I interviewed him with your dad and Fallness on Beyond the Pond one weekend. And I mean, he's just such an easily likable guy that you just you want him to succeed. And I think he plays that way as well. He really cares about his teammates and he cares about doing the right thing and making the right plays. And I loved your point about how him playing with Spurgeon allows Spurgeon to be a little bit more free because when you've got smaller defensemen like that, you kind of need, it's like opposites attract. It's like a relationship. Almost. You kind of need the opposite style to really balance out that line on the blue line. And I think to your point, Middleton did that because he will get aggressive. He'll stand up. You know, if someone comes around Spurgeon and is messing with him, Middleton will be that guy that steps up. He can also make the smart defensive play where he just shuts things down and can get the play moving and whatever. Um, and I really think that the wild needed somebody like that, especially if you look at what they had this season, you've got a guy like Matt Dumble who likes to jump up into play. You've got a guy like Spurgeon who could use the body like Middleton to help balance them out. Even Jonas Brodine isn't that big of a guy. I mean, he's kind of a lanky or he's tall, but he's kind of lanky. Um, and Middleton really added some size to that blue line. And so I think you bring a guy like him back, even if you lose somebody like Matt Dumba, even if you lose some of those pieces, you know, if Cooley doesn't come back, if Merrill doesn't, you know, whatever, um, <clears throat> you've got Goligoski who you re-signed for a couple of years. I really think that would help support that blue line, whatever happens with Matt Dumba, whether he's here or not. And I just, I don't know. I'd have a hard time seeing him go. I do really like Merrill. Um, mm-hmm. I do think that he didn't make too many big mistakes. I mean, again, he didn't stand out and wow me as much as a guy like Milton did, but I don't think he's supposed to, you know, that he is, he Mm -hmm. is who he is. Um, so I, and you know, if you got a guy like Callan Addison coming up, so there's a lot of things that can happen on that blue line, much like last year, Fred, do you have a thought in this up for debate? You want to pick a defenseman? We love I'm making Fred pick something. Yes. Come on, Fred. Pick oh, you are <laughs> embarrassing. You have to oh, out the mustache. 
The mustache. That's it. Oh, Middleton's yeah. facial hair. That's the only reason why you vote for him. He walks in the door. I don't care what it is. You're voting for that guy. <laughs> See, this is why we yes. ask for Fred's opinion because he grounds us. He he reminds us what's important. He doesn't in life, have and two it's front the teeth. The mustache. Exactly. He's like you walk in like that guy. That's an defenseman <laughs> in the NHL. Come on, Alex. Doesn't yeah. Middleton look like Cal Clutterbuck? When I first saw him, I'm like, 100. This is Cal Clutterbuck reincarnated. Like this is what I need in my life because I loved Cal Clutterbuck when he played for the Wild. He looks exactly like him, does he not? Yeah, it's 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 a spitting image. It's like, oh my god, this is yeah, this is uh, Cal Clutterbuck Jr. And uh, <laughs> he's got this, he's got the same personality too. Yes. So it's it's. Yeah, I love, you know, it, it's so much fun to have a character like him and like Nick Delorier on the team too. just the the screen uh, screenshots we get of them too, like when they're all hyped up, hyped yeah. up and, you know, cheering on the on the boys. It's it's hilarious for sure. So that, uh, you know, we talked about the defensive end as well. And since we're on the topic of defensemen, before we wrap things up here, I just want to ask you quick you know, the reason I put this up for debate out this week was because the week prior, I believe it was, we talked about what was the biggest factor in the wild losing in the first round of the playoffs. And Jesse and I made arguments saying the defense was not good enough. Um, how important do you think it is that the wild figure out the blue line in the off season? Or do you think it's more so figuring out how to replace Kevin Fiala if we trade him or what we're doing with the goalies, where do you put importance on sorting out that blue line as far as the success the wild could possibly have in the upcoming season. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It's, it's figuring out that decor, um, especially uh, what, what they're going to do with, uh, with Matt Dumba, um, you know, just with his big contract, they're going to have to have to move another defenseman. And also, also we know special teams is so Ugh. important and uh, it was a nightmare this season. And hopefully you know, hopefully they can figure that out. And, you know, if, if they do move Matt Dumba, uh, you know, figure out who's going to be on that power play to, to help um, and, and penalty kill too, because I thought the penalty kill was an absolute nightmare against the blues. And, uh, um, you know, you know, hopefully with getting Middleton uh, resigned and, uh, you know, I, I, I think John Merrill, like, like we mentioned, he isn't going to, you know, change, um, uh, you know, uh, the game, you know, tremendously, but he was good on the penalty kill too. And so, yeah, it's uh, the, the decor is so important uh, because, um, you know, the goalies can't do everything themselves. Right. right. And so you have to, especially in the playoffs, you have to have a strong, uh, you know, decor and you look at the teams that are left, they all have, uh, you know, pretty good uh, defensemen uh, back there. And so, that's that those are the one, two priority for me. Um, and, uh, goalies, you can figure out later, but making sure you have your strong in the back end is, is, is huge, um, for postseason success. You just had to bring up specialty. Excuse me. while I call my therapist real quick. You really had to go there, Alex. We, we made it to the end of the podcast. We're all having a good right. time. And you just had to bring right. up special teams one more time. Right. <laughs> all right. Sure. Well, Alex, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to yeah. do my best to wrap this as only Jesse Pierce can wrap this show. So I'm going to give out my thank yous real quick. I'm going to start with Alex McLeddy. Thank you for joining us. I can't believe it took us 128 episodes to get you on the show. You're dancing right. on 52 times. So we're right. going to have to change that. We'll get you on again at some point soon. Talk more hockey. Uh, thanks for produ to producer Fred for holding down the fort. Uh, thank you to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network, as Jesse likes to say. Shout out to Jim Beam. It's campfire season, so get some Jim Beam. Pour yourself up a glass. Shout out to Better Edge. Code Buttes gets you $10 at sign up. Sodastick.com. We love those guys. Lots of cool gear, um, sports apparel, Minnesota Wild stuff. Um, code bar down beauties saves you 15% off on your purchase Royal credit union, less fee, more free peak vestibular center. Don't forget. We're going to have Dr. Tyler Stewart on to discuss concussions coming up at some point in the off season. I think that's it. Oh, and shout out to the fans, shout out to the bar down beauty listeners. We appreciate you. Couldn't do it without you. Um, so yeah, enjoy the rest of uh, your week as you'll be listening to this on Monday and we will chat soon. Bye guys. <laughs>